are we secure on the dating of all the structures above water on Malta? Mm. Um, um, I suggest strongly that we're not. Yeah. There are very few carbon dates from Malta, and the new dating work that's been done there hasn't added usefully to that database. Mm. There's been very little, very little carbon dating done uh, on the Maltese temples. And uh, that carbon dating is itself uh, insecure. Malta used to be joined to Sicily during the Ice Age. Malta wasn't an island, it was part of the mainland. Yeah. Imagine standing before structures that predate the Great Pyramids and Stonehenge, shrouded in mystery and built by a civilization lost to time. I believe that's the time uh, where we lost track of an episode in our story, where we, where we lost track of an earlier civilization. Welcome to the megalithic temples of Malta, some of the oldest freestanding structures on Earth. These architectural marvels are not only masterpieces of ancient engineering, but also portals into the past of a sophisticated society whose understanding of astronomy continues to intrigue scholars and scientists. A deep understanding of astronomy that could only be gained through hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years of very careful observation. Join us as we explore the secrets these stone giants hold, revealing insights into a world both ancient and astonishingly advanced. Despite their historical and architectural significance, these ancient temples were not recognized for their true value until the late 19th century. Before this period, local awareness of their antiquity was minimal, and preservation was not considered a priority. Throughout earlier centuries, the temples suffered from local farming and building practices that led to significant deterioration. Stones from these structures were frequently removed and repurposed for new construction projects. A lot of archaeology that gets done doesn't get done because of a targeted search. It may be because a dam is being built or a new highway is being built. The first documented mention of the temples appeared in Jean Quentin Dautin's 1536 publication Insulae Militae Descriptio, which noted the existence of ancient ruins on Malta, though detailed archaeological interest would only take shape much later. Dating from 3600 BC to 2500 BC, these temples are older than both Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. Recognizing their profound historical and cultural significance, several of the temples were designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 1980. This recognition was a crucial step in ensuring their preservation and promoting further scholarly research and public awareness. Systematic studies and excavations of these sites began in earnest in the early 20th century with Sir Themistocles Zamet, a man of many talents including archaeology, medicine, history and curation. Starting around 1905, Zamet's extensive archaeological work marked a significant pivot towards the scientific exploration of these structures. His efforts established a chronological framework for the construction and usage of the temples, greatly enhancing our understanding of prehistoric Maltese culture. The lost civilization of prehistoric antiquity. Zamet's findings not only attracted international scholarly interest, but also helped increase tourism, bringing additional funding and support for further studies. Among his discoveries were numerous artifacts, including pottery, tools, and the iconic fat lady figurines, thought to represent a fertility goddess or a maternal figure. Continuing from the fascinating historical backdrop and archaeological discoveries, the megalithic temples of Malta are not just ancient architectural marvels. They are sophisticated structures that intricately reflect the socio-religious fabric of the society that constructed them. Their design demonstrates an advanced knowledge of stonework and astronomy. The temples are renowned for their unique trefoil layout, which consists of three semicircular chambers connected by a central corridor. This design is not only unique to Maltese temple architecture, but is also laden with symbolic meanings. It could represent various stages of life, celestial bodies or deities from local mythology, with the repetition of the number three perhaps signifying a sacred or divine principle in their cosmology. Functionally, these chambers likely serve diverse ritualistic or communal purposes, each possibly dedicated to different aspects of life or deities. The layout itself facilitates processional movements, which are believed to have been part of the ritual activities conducted within these sacred spaces. Moreover, the orientation and layout of the temples are marked by astronomical precision. For instance, the Menadra South Temple aligns with the equinox sunrise, 
allowing light to flood the main corridor and central chambers at specific times of the year. This dramatic interplay of light and shadows could have been crucial for marking seasonal changes and regulating ceremonial calendars. There was a highly sophisticated knowledge of the precession of the equinoxes, that it's impossible to trace how far back it goes. The choice of temple locations also takes into account visual and environmental factors, such as line of sight to important landscape features, horizon visibility for astronomical observations and protection from prevailing winds, showing a sophisticated integration of architecture with the natural landscape. The structural engineering techniques used in the temples also reveal the builders' innovative approaches. The use of corbelling, where stones are laid horizontally and each successive layer extends slightly beyond the one below, allowed the creation of self-supporting domed or vaulted structures. This early form of arch construction, predating Roman arches, illustrates their advanced engineering capabilities. Additionally, the flexibility inherent in the corbelling and the interlocking of megaliths without mortar could have provided some resistance to seismic activity, an important consideration given Malta's location within the Mediterranean seismic belt. The decorative elements of the temples further enrich their architectural sophistication. Elaborate carvings and reliefs, including spirals, animal figures and plant motifs, are deeply engraved into the limestone. These decorations are not merely ornamental, they are imbued with symbolic meanings, possibly representing fertility, the cycle of life, or a connection to nature. Artifacts such as the famous Fat Lady sculptures and other statuettes found in and around the temples suggest that these sites also served as focal points for art and culture. Additionally, traces of red ochre found on some temple walls indicate that color was used either to enhance certain carvings or to demarcate special areas within the temples adding another layer to the sophisticated aesthetic and ceremonial aspects of the temple architecture. The construction techniques used in the megalithic temples of Malta further highlight the advanced engineering of their creators. The construction of these ancient temples showcases an exceptional mastery of various techniques that have contributed to their preservation through millennia. I can't help thinking time capsule, that there was an intention to preserve this. One of the most critical materials in the construction of these temples is Globigerina limestone, a sedimentary rock predominant in the Maltese archipelago. Notably soft when freshly quarried, this limestone allowed artisans to carve intricate details and shape the stones with relative ease. As the limestone is exposed to air, it undergoes a hardening process due to the gradual evaporation of inherent moisture and crystallization of minerals. This transformation significantly enhances the resilience and longevity of the structures. The intricate carvings on the temple walls, including spiral designs and animal figures, attest to the high level of craftsmanship and the advanced tools and techniques employed during their creation. The logistics involved in moving and assembling massive limestone blocks, some weighing several tons, were formidable. Theories suggest that the builders might have used log rollers, stone balls, or sledges made from tree trunks, often lubricated with plant oils or animal fats to reduce friction. This suggests a highly organized society with clear hierarchies and labor specialization, capable of coordinating large-scale construction efforts. There is also evidence to suggest that ramps made from earth or smaller stones were used to position these large blocks, similar to techniques used in other ancient civilizations. Moreover, the temples exemplify an advanced use of mortarless construction. Builders employed a technique of cutting and fitting stones so precisely that no mortar was needed to hold them together. This dry stone technique, known for its durability and flexibility in seismic activity, involves crafting joints that interlock without gaps. The lack of mortar not only prevents erosion, but also allows the structures to breathe during earthquakes enabling the stones to shift slightly and settle back without causing structural damage, a technique that has proven effective in other earthquake-prone regions like those encountered by Inca architects. It's fascinating to draw parallels and contrast these ancient marvels with other legendary structures like Machu Picchu. Both sites utilize mortarless construction techniques, which not only exemplifies the precision of stone cutting in ancient times, but also ensures the stability and longevity of these structures. This shared approach underlines a profound understanding of stone properties and structural engineering across two very different cultures.
However, the cultural contexts and geographical settings of the megalithic temples and Machu Picchu are distinctly different. The temples in Malta were primarily religious structures. In contrast, Machu Picchu likely served a dual purpose as both a royal estate and a religious retreat, possibly. Geographically, the Maltese temples are nestled on a small island terrain, whereas Machu Picchu sits high in the Andes Mountains. These differences reflect how each culture adapted its architectural styles and techniques to fit its environment and societal needs. During World War II, Malta's strategic position in the Mediterranean made it a prime target, leading to heavy bombings. The value of the megalithic temples was recognized during these turbulent times, prompting significant protective measures. One notable method was the sand covering technique used at sites like Hagar Kim, where heaps of earth and sand were piled over the temples to cushion the impact of bomb blasts and prevent damage from flying debris. While this method helped prevent direct damage during air raids, it also introduced challenges like moisture retention, which could accelerate erosion of the stonework. After the war, extensive surveys and careful removal of sand were necessary to assess any damage and prevent further stress on the ancient stones. These ongoing research and conservation efforts are vital for sustaining the legacy of the megalithic temples of Malta, allowing future generations to marvel at these testaments to human ingenuity and resilience.